Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome to Name the Game. Cheers. Orange Pico today. How's everybody doing today? I hope, uh... Ah, we can find a better place for that. How about right there? Oh, that works. Hey. Hopefully everyone's having a good day. There's a lot going on. There's a lot. Uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll talk about it throughout the course of today. It's going to be a few hours stream. we got a lot of games to go over today. So, uh, yeah. You guys want to talk? We can talk. You guys want to just talk about games? Let's talk about games. You want to talk about what's going on? We can talk about what's going on. So, ah, let's do it. I'm excited for this. I am. Uh, this is... For those that aren't familiar with what this is, welcome. First off, I, I, I should introduce myself. Hi, everybody. I'm Edward. Edward Euler from Heavy Cardboard. I host this show here. So, hey, welcome. Hopefully you're... I ain't got a clue what today is. No idea what day of the week it is. Hope you all are having a good Tuesday. <laughs> Between the pandemic, the protests, no, the injustices that are going on in the world, I think that'd be a better way to frame that. Uh, a lot going on right now, right? So pretty chaotic. So I am not trying to supplant. I am not trying to do any of those things. Um, I talked about this in the weekly look ahead. This isn't going to be preachy. It's not going to avoid the subject either. Um, I'm just trying to do my job and bring some entertainment for you guys. So hopefully we can do that today. So name the game. This started, hell, I don't know, five years ago maybe or so on Twitter. I just started grabbing pictures off of BGG and saying, hey, what game is this? And a bunch of my Twitter followers would play along and just throw out replies. And that was a lot of fun. Um, then I stopped doing it. And then I was like, hey, why don't, we, why don't we do that once? And I was going to do it on Twitter and I was like, wait a minute, I have a YouTube channel. Why don't we try it here? So I did. And this is now the third time doing this. This one's gonna be harder for you guys. Let me preface that, okay? When I did the second one, uh, the first one, it took me about three hours longer to prepare the stream than I thought it would because I wanted to give credit to all of the photographers. So I had to go into paint and type in the names and pick by and all this stuff. And so I wanted to do that, so it took me way longer than I thought it was going to to prepare for an impromptu stream. And the second, uh, getting ready for the second time, I just started picking a bunch of games and, or maybe it was for the first time, right. No, second time. I ended up having enough for two shows. So I split it up because I had almost 100. And that's what today is. Today is going to be those that I didn't do last time. This one's going to be harder because there's not any duplicates from the first two. Now, not all of them are going to be hard. No, they're not all war games. There may be an 18XX on there. Uh, although it shouldn't be that hard, I don't think. Uh, there are more war games and a little bit more deeper cuts on some really cool games that I recommend folks checking out. Now, every game on this list, I think, is a game worth investigating. So that's kind of what today is about, is to have fun, try and figure out whether or not you can decipher what game it is, it's not about who got the most right or getting them all right, because unless you're me, you're not going to get all of these right. So that's not what, it's about having fun and trying to uh, learn about new games, check out, investigate some new games that may or may not be of interest to you. So that's what today is about, celebrating the hobby. And man, uh, 40 years of board games, I would say, thereabouts. So it should be a good time, all right? So yeah, this, this, should, be a, this should be a good time, I think. Uh, also, I'm gonna do a giveaway. Um, and by a giveaway, I mean I'm going to give away a bunch of games. I don't know how many. I got, I got a host of games still to give away. 
So how we're going to do that is I'm going to throw out a code word at some point, uh, and then you guys need to shoot me an email at contact at heavycardboard.com with the name the or um, with the uh, the code word that I'm going to say in the subject line, just the code word, nothing else. That's it. And I'm going to randomly pick a bunch of winners. And then shipping in the U.S. is going to be on my dime. Overseas, I will, I will ship, I will pay the first 15 bucks for. I think that's fair. When, if you get your name drawn, I will uh, tell you what game it's going to be. And if you want it, I'll send it to you. If not, I will pick someone else. Because, I'll be honest, I have so many giveaways right now. Like, there's going to be a copy of Teo Tio Wakan. Maybe you have a copy of that. You don't want that. Give it to somebody else. Okay. There's going to be uh, some obscure stuff. There's going to be a copy of Hannibal. Give it away. There's a bunch of stuff. All right? Because I need to make room. So, plus I want to be able to spread some cheer to you guys. It's not sponsored. It's not anything. It's just extra games that I have. So, I'm giving them to you guys. You can't send an email yet because you don't have the code word. Also, have some fun. I don't want emails until this is done because I want to know how you did. I don't care. That's not going to, if you got them all right, it doesn't get you an extra random entry. I just want to know. So be honest. Have fun with this, okay? All right. All right. So I've stalled long enough, I think, maybe. Uh, I... It takes a lot longer to randomize the order of these things than you might think. So the first few I know are easy. It's gonna be tough. Don't punt, okay? And what I mean by that is, oh, it's just some war game with shits. Don't do that. Have some fun with this, all right? Hopefully Rocky is here. Rocky is here, good. Irene will be here at the top of the hour. So we'll start off easy. We won't need Irene as much, but we will as we go along. So, and I apologize. I'm supposed to be getting a phone call for a package that's going to be delivered that I actually have to take. Uh, that's not really professional, I understand, but it's from UPS. They've had a package that they've said has been attempted delivery four times, and every time it goes out for delivery, it never makes it. So, uh, natural disaster was one of the excuse. There's no natural disaster. And we haven't had any protests here in Wakefield. So, I feel like I'm being lied to by UPS. So, I finally called them. So, they're supposed to call me back. No later than 15 minutes ago. Here we are. All right. I'll say the email ag address again later. I have breakfast down there I didn't finish. I'm a mess today. Cheers, everybody. Let's accept one another as humans, and let's have some fun today, all right? We're all gamers, right? Let's get our nerd on. By the way, I still have Small City set up here on the table for the stream that got postponed and makes me sad because I'm have, I, it took me a long time to put it all, make it all pretty. <sighs> all right, let's get started, shall we? Let's have some fun. And you guys can count how many there are. There is some number between 45 and 50. I don't know how many. This will take however long it takes. I don't have commercials. I don't need that. Or I'm not on network TV. Here we go. Let's have some fun. No, no, no other PlayStation games. Um, this is actually uh, Animal Crossing for the kids. Anyway. All right. So here we go. Y'all ready? There's the first one. Space. The final front. No, I'm kidding. All right, let's have some fun. Starting off easy. There you go. Feel free. Call it out, because I'm not going to talk about what the name is. So type them in. And if you want to try and beat each other as far as being the first one in, go for it. All right? So. Chat will not be up on the screen today. So you guys, if you're watching this afterwards, you can play along. People want me to post the answers, by the way, at the, these. And I'm like, I'm not gonna. I'm not. There's, read chat. People have answers. Joe, the email address is going to be contact at heavycardboard.com. 
but nobody can email me yet because I haven't said what the code word is. Very funny, Eric. All right. See? I wanted to give you guys a false sense of confidence. Because <laughs> this is as easy as it gets. No, that's not true. There's a couple other easy ones. Again, it's not a race. It doesn't matter if you're the first one to say it or the 70th one to say it. Chime in. It's fun to watch the chat just blow up. It's fun. All right. All right. Well, you guys nailed that one. We can move on, right? Okay. Hold on. Let me move that. All right. Good job. All right. This next one, a little bit of backstory. There is a dog named for this game because. It's a medium-sized dog. <laughs> Paul, it's okay. It's all right. Don't worry about it, all right? Ben says, I work in a brewery and I'm trying to sneak in a game reference into the name of my next batch, if anyone has any ideas. Ben, we're going to need to know a flavor profile and what type of beer and all of that, okay? So work with us, Ben, on that, and I'm sure the peanut gallery will be able to hook you up. <laughs> Rocky, Snoop Dogg in the Renaissance. <laughs> hey, it, by the way, if you guys are having a bit of a delay, refresh, all right? Refresh everything that should sync everything for you guys, all right? All right, it's a German Kolsch. Uh, I'm not a beer drinker, so forgive me, but I think that's how you say it. A German Kolsch for the summer, so very light, crisp, is, is the beer, okay? So if you guys have any, uh, any uh, refer game references, okay? All right, so you guys seem to know this one. And yes, it's a true story. There is a couple that lives in Ohio uh, very good friends of mine uh, that uh, that named their dog after this game because it's a quintessential medium-sized dog. And this game is the quintessential, like, this is the baseline that we use for midweight euro right here. That, that's what this is. All right. All right. So... Cool, you guys killed that one. This next one, if you've been watching the streams lately, there's, there's a number of games that have either been streamed or are going to be streamed soon that are going to be in today's, all right? All right. Oh yeah, and another thing, um, Shrey says, also you can set the speed uh, faster so that if you're a little bit behind, you could always speed up that way and catch up, all right? Was this ever a HC stream? You betcha. Oh yeah, this definitely got streamed. All right, this next one, recently streamed. 
could be one of my all-time favorites. Could be. Oh, ow, ho, 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 ho. Apparently, ah, I'm allergic to something. Ooh, that's not good. Hey, Chad. Adam in the house? What's up, Adam? The king of timestamps right there. Thank you for your hard work, Adam. All right, you guys seem to be nailing this one. Well, the good news is for those of y'all that don't have these, that, that aren't getting these, there's some quality games to research right here. <laughs> uh, ah, oh, oh, okay, Robert says, wow, I'm bad at this, love it. There you go, that's the right attitude, all right? And is the is that Latin for that, Matt? Is that what that is? Okay. And that's another thing that if uh, if you're still if chat's still ahead of where you are, you can always minimize chat and then type in, and then you can read chat afterwards. So there you go. It's uh, Tony ignoring chat to play along. There you go. See that. That's the way to do it. By the way, um, while, while, while I'm waiting for everything here, uh, last time my wallet gave me a big <laughs> glory to Rome, that probably gonna happen again. Yeah, maybe. Sorry, Asbjorn. Nope, not. Uh, I asked for suggestions on a quality chair uh, to have down here since I spend so many hours um, streaming and getting ready for everything. Um, I, I go pick it up tomorrow. It's going to be a refurbished two-year-old Herman Miller Aeron. I went and uh, I test fitted a bunch of chairs and this thing was amazing. And one really nice thing is, since I spend so much time leaned forward, uh, the, the lumbar support is actually going to kind of follow my back with that. Cannot wait to pick that up tomorrow. So the big streams this week on Thursday and fr well, Friday and Saturday, uh, I'll have my air on. I'm really excited about that. So thank you, everybody that chimed in with suggestions. Found it on, uh, found it on Craigslist. It is not nearly as cheap as what some of y'all found it because we're in the middle of a pandemic and a lot of people apparently are buying uh, Aeron's and uh, chairs because working from home and stuff. So yeah, not nearly as cheap, but way cheaper than new. Um, so pretty, pretty excited about this. So there we go. Ooh, Tyler giving us a little, a little history here. I dig it. That's what I'm talking about. All right, and thank you, Matt. All right. All right, so we are up. <laughs> uh, see, not true for me. So Scott from Phasing Player, uh, he says, me, five years ago. Wow, this $100 chair is expensive. Me now, wow, how is this chair only 500 bucks? When I used to play poker for a living, I was looking at like the Aaron Miller, the Human Scale, Freedom and Liberty and all those. And even when I was making far more money playing poker for a living online than I am now, I just never pulled the trigger on a really good quality chair. And ironically, now I am. So, yeah, there you go. It does not have the cooling gel, but it's all like the mesh stuff. I mean, this isn't a bad chair. I got this at Costco, 100 bucks or so. Um, this is a really good office chair. This is actually going to be uh, the chair. This is the one I use up at my desk. And you'll see Jess in this. And if she likes this, and this is a good chair for her, we're actually going to buy a few more for the studio in here. And that way, people that are on the streams have a little bit more comfort uh, than what it is that they've been sitting in. 
thought that was considerate. So there we go. All right, there we go. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Her uh, Herman Miller Aeron is like 12, 1300 new. I, I can't do that. I, to be clear, um, I have, how do I word this? There has been, call it an angel investor. Not really, it's just somebody has offered to do that. So thank you. So there we go, all right. Yeah, all right, let's move on. Here we go, next one, uh, here we go. By the way, the photographer in this one is, you know what, I don't need to be that big. I can shrink me down. Hold on, you guys know what I look like. There we go. That's a little bit better. How about we have that? Yeah, that's good. Uh, this is Steph. Steph Hodges, pumpkin, 312, uh, all the colors of the meeple, or all the meeples of the rainbow. Amazing photographer uh, and friend of mine. Good friend of mine. Friend of mine, yeah, yeah. So this is, there, there are a couple of uh, prolific photographers out there, and by a couple I mean a few. There's, uh, there's Steph, there's Eric, there's Hank Rolleman, who is amazing when it comes to uh, photography from Spiel and stuff. So you're going to see, I don't know if, Eric, if I got any of Eric's photos in here or not, but I know I got at least a couple from Steph and I know I got a couple from Hank. So, Asbjorn, 2300 there. Wow. Yeah, no. Okay. A Kolsch for Odin. That's good. That's really good, Jet. Trooper Jet. That's really good. Home field advantage. Make guests use cardboard boxes. <laughs> Just Jess. No, she would still crush us. Rocky, my whole chemical plant job. Joe, my shelf of opportunity number 53. Seriously, come on. What is this game, guys? Come on. And by guys, I mean guys and gals. Everybody. I think you guys. Mm -hmm. Come on, try and be serious. We streamed this not too many months ago. I think. And this is the newest edition of this game, not the older edition. This is a smaller box, this one. But yeah, really, really excited about the, uh, the new chair. And uh, I'll be excited once we get more of these, I can actually have a chair back at my desk so I can, instead of doing stuff on my knees, because I don't want to carry this upstairs and downstairs all the time. So, well done, Todd, Eric, Joe, Adam. See, I feel like Adam has home field advantage big time on this, if we've streamed it, because he's had to go through and timestamp all of them, so he's very familiar with some of these, very familiar. Fahrenheit 451 the game? No. So I'm curious how you guys like are you are you are you trying to like like tiny eye the pick? Like how are you, are you searching by who the photographer is? Or I'm curious. Huh. Huh. All right. This one seemed to have stumped quite a bit of y'all, which I'm somewhat surprised about. <laughs> hey, Adam, you're in, you're in Poland, right? Where in Poland are you? Uh, I asked because once travel becomes more
once travel happens again, we may be making a trip over to Poland, so. Oh. Oh, okay, and Shrey says, I bought a copy of this soon after our stream. Nice. <laughs> All right, so. Where, where in Poland are you, though? All right, so we got that one. This next one, uh, I had to reach out to another content creator to ask permission to use part of their intro. Uh, for this one. Okay. It's going back a little ways, but uh, I was pretty, pretty excited about, about the, uh, we don't do much by way of skits or wear crazy hats or anything like that here, but uh, this one was kind of skittish, uh, skit ish and I had a lot of fun with this. This is cool. Nope, Paul. And you guys got to realize that this, this is fun for me as well. Like, even though I know the answers to these, to watch your guys' responses to these. This is, this is fun. So one interesting thing about the, uh, the chair, the place I got it from is like a discount outlet whatever and uh, they can uh, like customize the wheels and everything on your uh, on your chairs and the geek and sun table that we have here is taller like it's the top of this is 34 inches high which is really and the bottom is 28 so it's eight inches thick and so I was looking at getting uh, bigger uh, wheels so I would be able to raise up higher, but then my knees wouldn't fit under, it's tricky, it's tricky. Not, not through the window, it was off a roof. It was off a roof. This one stuck a lot of y'all, but, but you guys are doing pretty good. <laughs> Nigel nailed it. There you go. Yeah, that was fun. Th th this was a fun idea. Uh, I remember watching that and then thinking, hey, you know what would be funny? So... <laughs> uh, Asbjorn, did you did you back the the Kickstarter from Geek and Son? So, the, like I said, this is this is our our Geek and Son. This is our uh, this is our uh, sponsor here. Um, we the the Megan two is is on Kickstarter. Uh, the uh, the one we have though is is not. Uh. So anyway, but yeah, uh, people are wondering. This is the Virgo. And it is ridiculous in the best way. Uh, yeah, 
the, the fact that the lighting, the speakers, uh, the, the French, now we have the prototype of it, so we don't have the French drain on ours, but this is, yeah, it's, I mean, these, you guys can see these fold down to make player stations. There are six of them around the table. Um, it's heavy. It's like 300, 350 pounds. It's, but man, this table is amazing. Legit. Uh, oh, cool. As we are. And Tony. Awesome. Good deal. Um, hopefully you guys, you guys mentioned the show. I hope you did. All right. So, all right. Take care, Joe. Enjoy your Zoom. All right. Let's move on, shall we? This next one should be a gimme. I really hope it's a gimme for you guys. I hope so. There you go. Okay. Yeah, a lot, a lot less money in, uh, in travel for me as well this year. That's really good. All right, take care, Joe. Be safe at the office tomorrow, okay? Then I love seeing new names in chat. Not that I get tired of seeing same old names. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that. I'm saying it's always exciting to see new names in chat that I don't recognize. That's, that's awesome. I love seeing that. Thank you, Paul. Six years on Saturday. That's crazy. Three cancel game conventions, one gaming table. Fair exchange, I reckon. There you go. Robert says, now I'm watching to see what I should go out and buy. Like I said, my, my, my goal today is not to sell games. I don't care if you guys buy them or not. Uh, it's just to maybe highlight some games that are either known good games, I've heard very good things about, if I don't know, or they all have something good about them. How's that? Okay. And the expansion of this game, three of the four modules are fantastic. The fourth one is really hard. Man, it's hard. Uh, in, a good get, in a good way. So, also stream this. And this is a very, very, very old podcast episode. All right, you guys nailed this one. This next one... Uh, Somehow I've never streamed this one. I don't know why. I just haven't gotten to it yet. Again, there's, you know, 1,300 games in that room. It's only so many streams a week, right? I haven't played this one since soon after it came out, I don't think. It's a good game. Hey, Stephanie! Adam says the last one was streamed three times. There you go. Yes, 100%, Bradley. I'm not going to talk about it. If you don't want to know what the answer is, minimize chat or shrink it, and then you can type it in whenever you think you know it. Whatever. Yep. And yes, I have the hard-to-find, apparently, expansion for this. So... Oh, that's a good question, Ben. When did, uh, curious when folks in chat started watching the show or, or, or listening to the show. Any who have been around all six years, the brass Kickstarter steam is when I found HC. And man, I have never been more stressed out on a live stream than I was with that brass Kickstarter, uh, that brass one. Woo, woo, woo. 
was I nervous. How do I deal with the YouTube chat delay? I'm not, I'm not going to mention, I don't mention what the game is. Because if you're watching this after the fact, you can go read in chat what the answer is. Gusarino says, I'm struggling to recognize it without the board game arena background. What's the board game arena background? I'm curious on this one. Bradley, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't matter when you came in. The fact is you're here, so... The expansion makes this so much better, does it, Stephanie? I've never played with the expansion. I have it, but I've never played it. Thank you, Seven Less. Cheers. Thank you. That's cool. JJ says, uh, for me, for a BIOS Megafauna tutorial before a local game store game. That's awesome. Oh, what was particularly stressful about Brass? Two things. One, it was, it was the first ever sponsored live stream. Uh, and number two, uh, you, uh, the, our internet crashed on our first ever sponsored live stream. <laughs> I was, I was unpleased. If you were in that room when the internet went down, oh my God. <laughs> now if it happens, I'm like, eh, it's out of my control. So yeah. Whoo. Adam says, first time learning about heavy cardboard is learning Wildcatters. Now my favorite game, so I could teach it the first packs unplugged. That's awesome. That's cool, Robert. Lots of time uh, to watch while grading papers and stuff because he's a teacher. That's awesome. All right. And I apologize that I have to keep my phone on because, again, that phone call for delivery, so... Seven Less says, thank you. Your teachers have gotten eight games to the table for us. That's awesome. Yay. All right. Feeling guilty that I have more games so far than I've been identified. I have to get caught up on unplayed games. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm doing that. I'll be honest. Uh, all the solo streams, I've been able to get a lot of games that I wasn't able to get otherwise. So this, is, this has been good for my... Uh, Oh, room of opportunity back there. Awesome. This is cool. All right. All right. So you guys, uh, and Rocky says this last terraforming Mars was when I finally pulled the supporter trigger. I, I'm glad you did. Thank you to all of y'all. And even if you don't support the show there, thanks for watching guys. Um, Watch the teachers with the rule book and go over them. That's the right way to do it, in my opinion. My job, yes, I try and nail everything. I really, really do. As does everybody else that does these type videos. But my job, I see it as trying to make the teaching uh, or you going through the rule book considerably easier. So That's awesome to see. All right, let's move on. This next one, now, now it's going to be a little bit harder, I think. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. And I will accept all reasonable answers on this one as far as which version of this. Well, for a thousand, I'm getting Davis tattooed. I'm getting, I'm getting the show logo. I'm getting Davis at a thousand. That was uh, said somewhat tongue in cheek when this was at 138 because uh, we called this, when it was a box on a wall in Denver, we called it the 138 box because when we started the studio upstairs there 
Uh, we had 138 patrons at that point. Heavy Cardboard did. And someone had said, hey, you get a thousand, you ought to get a tattoo. I was like, sure, let's do it. Thousand patrons, I'll get Davis tattooed. All right, we're getting there. I'm, I'm, hey, every one of my tattoos that I have and on my back and everything marks an important, like a meaningful moment or something that was big in my life at the time. So I will never regret any of my tattoos. And so, yeah, obviously this has been six years of my life uh, and all encompassing of my life. So yeah, this, that makes total sense, right? Yes, if you guys uh, do enjoy the stream today, give it a thumb down below. Helps the show. Subscribe. Also helps the show, but also helps you guys. And uh, if you want to support the show, you can like what people are talking about, you can go to pledgehc.com. Support the show there. Certainly would appreciate it. Definitely appreciate it, y'all. Oh, yeah, you guys. Oh, yeah, I guess Shut Up and Sit Down did recently do a version of this, didn't they? They did. This is not a coin game. Uh, this is a, an, uh, originally designed by Francis Tresham, the late, great Francis Tresham. I do not have a 138 tattoo, but I will be getting a Davis tattoo when that hits four digits. Seven less says all the ink I have uh, makes Teotihuacan iconography super easy. All Mexica as as Teca stuff. That's awesome. That's good stuff. And Chris says this would have been a lot more difficult if Shut Up and Sit Down hadn't just done a video. All right, fair enough. No. Um, by the way, this is the the big boy. Uh, version of this. This is the giant one. So, but I will accept the answers that you guys are giving for the smaller version of this. Okay. All right. So let's see, what do we got next? Uh, this next one, I think you guys will be able to get. If you've been a fan of the show for any length of time, uh, this next one, I think you'll be able to uh, get. So yeah, I mean, those that are guessing those, that name, Ex yes. Uh, actually, Ashbjorn, this is the second of what you listed there. That's what this is. Yes, coin shits are, are better quality, but there are far fewer coin shits than there are in this game. <laughs> All right, let's move on. This next one. Uh, Designer has a new game coming out. This one, I am super stoked for this. One cup, done. Plan better, I have. Now we have Jen Matcha. There we go, all right. I do think, in all seriousness, that I think if the artwork were a little bit better in this game, I think it would have been a lot more popular. And this is a fantastic game. Uh, this one is the second edition, but I will accept either. <laughs> and again, it's not a contest. It doesn't matter how many you get right. Just, I'm curious. So yeah, when you guys do shoot the email, by the way, let, let's make the word, uh, the code word unity. Okay, U-N-I-T-Y. So, uh, to be entered for the giveaways, the only thing I want in the, uh, 
subject line is unity. Don't send it now because I want to know what your score was. I'm curious. Also, I'm curious, when did you first start listening to or uh, watching Heavy Cardboard? Tell me those two things in the, uh, in the email, okay? And then I will pick a winner. Uh, what is today? Today is Tuesday. Let's go and make it to the end of the week. So Sunday night, 23.59 hours uh, rolling into Monday is the cutoff, all right? But don't, don't send me emails yet. You're going to send them to contact, C-O-N-T-A, you know what? Here's the email address. There you go. Contact at heavycardboard.com. Okay. Subject line, unity. That's it. One word. And then tell me how many you got right out of how many ever there were. And tell me when you uh, started listening or watching the show. The end. Don't send it now. Because I get emails to my phone, so I see when they come in. Don't send them until we're done, because don't know how many you're going to get right. And you have all week. You have until Sunday night. Okay? All right. I don't know what that is. Guayusa? 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 Sevenless? What is that? Oh, oh, Ian, have you tried it? That's exactly what tea I'm, I'm drinking. It's the Rose City Gem Micha from Smith Tea from Portland. Nice. No, you, it's very funny, Wembley. I almost fell for it. All right, you guys got this one. All right, this next one recently streamed. Shouldn't be as hard if you've been watching the show. Normally, if I had done this in the previous time I'd done this, this would have been a lot harder for you guys. But now, now I think you guys can get this one. Oh, same, same here, Ian. It's definitely different than what I'm used to as well, but man, it's fantastic, isn't it? Oh, Todd, you spelled it right. You did. <laughs> nope. And, and, and Raphael, uh, you got it as well. Yeah. Yes, Rocky. <laughs> Th this had one of the more uh, inventive setups for the stream. I had a bunch of IKEA shelves, like the little uh, square shelves. Uh, set up over there and a bunch of player aids taped to it off screen so you guys couldn't see it uh, for reference stuff. Yep. Too much spicy sauce. Apply token. Yes.
See, now some of you guys are just showing off. You're not only get, naming the game, but the designer and the original author that this was based on. Color me impressed. Well done. All right. Let's move on. This next one, I don't know if this is going to be really easy or really hard. This one I'm really curious about. This will be uh, interesting to me. This should be fun. Ah. Oh, that's good tea. Man, that's good tea. I am somewhat surprised that you guys are nailing this. Like I said, I didn't know if this was going to be really, really hard or really easy. JJ showing off now. Yes, Kiesel. Sorry, Netwilk. My bad. There you go. <laughs> Keep in mind, I, I, I can only, I, I wasn't setting up all these games and taking pictures. That's why everybody who's taking picture or these pictures I've used are credited. So I didn't have one in there. Couldn't find that. Ah, okay, seven less. Okay, all right. <laughs> the lack of meeple distancing here is frankly outrageous. <laughs> Gusarino, stop that. All right, well, you guys nailed this. I didn't know if that was going to be easy or not. Um... All right, I'm going to rearrange a couple here. All right. This next one I think is going to be hard for you guys. I could be wrong. No, you're fine. You're fine. Just trying to keep things positive. Ooh, this one might have stumped folks. I think it may have stumped folks. If it does stump everybody, I will type what it is. Uh, I won't say what it is. Uh, oh, wow, check that. Never mind, don't need to. All right. I am, I am always impressed that you guys, there's, like, not everybody will know every game, but the collective between you guys will figure these out that is that is impressive netwilk robert paul gusarino todd well done <laughs> Gusarino, guessing uh, Fantasy Flight games purely on the number of card decks. <laughs> that's, 
That's so spot on. Uh... That isn't hard at all. It's clearly medieval monopoly. Clearly. I have yet to play this game. I have it, and I have the expansion that I have heard uh, is really good with this game. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's a game that I would like to eventually dig into. Oh, I know, Kiesel. I know how that works, but... Wow, you guys are really busting out some knowledge on this. Wasn't it originally Games Workshop? I don't know if this was. I, I, I'm gathering it, it might be. Oh, lost the original when basement flooded. Ouch, Todd, sorry. Okay, apparently, yeah, this was originally done by Games Workshop. All right. I mean, I'll be honest. When it comes to Fantasy Flight, I just assume Games Workshop like, originally did it. But yeah, all right. Wow, a lot more of you guys got this one than I, than I expected. All right, this next one uh, has a uh, cool story about this one particular card that I'm going to be showing you guys. This is an excellent two-player car, uh, two card game right here. Well, mostly card game. But. No, and uh, one other thing that I guess I should have prefaced at the beginning is, uh, when at all possible, I tried to get pictures that only have the actual components and not anything tricked out on them. So that, uh, but I will call out if there's anything above and beyond what the basic game has. Hey, Jens. Does anybody know the, it seems you guys have nailed this one, but does anybody know the uh, backstory about this card? Yes, Nigel and Gusarino. But do you know why it's there? And and what I'm referencing, uh, well, hold on. Before I, I will see if you guys know that what that is. Middle Eastern panda smuggling ring. You nailed it. Yep. <laughs> so the, uh, the story on this card is the designer of this game and the designer uh, of Zularetto. I think it's Zularetto. I think it is. I'm not sure. Uh... They had a friendly rivalry. They were their friends. And so it was done uh, as a kind of a, like a, a friendly jab to the other designer. And that's why the dead panda is underneath the camel uh, uh, stuff in the, on the back of the camel. Yep. So, yeah, it's a friendly rivalry between them, and, uh, yeah. So, there you go. But, yeah, that's a, uh, I don't know if I'd call it a famous card, but, like, that's cool little uh, Easter egg in this game. So, that card specifically. So All right, you guys nailed that. Well done. Well done. I expected, though, I'm not going to lie, I, I did expect you guys to, to get that one pretty well. 
All right, this next one, uh, tougher than that. Leave it at that. Like, I know what it is, even if I wasn't the one that put all this together. Like, I would know that what this is, but this is a hard picture to get this from. This is a tough one, legitimately. So there's no shame in not getting this. <laughs> Vincent, hands up, who's checking their copy for a dead panda at the moment. It's in there. It's in all the copies of it. Hey, Mark. Oh, man, that's good. So the interesting thing about the social distancing with the, with the pandemic and everything, I miss playing poker a lot. I don't miss sports nearly as much as I thought I would. I'm shocked at that. As somebody who grew up a sports fan his entire life, I am shocked at how much I don't miss my first true love, which is baseball. I miss it. Don't get me wrong. I do miss it. But not to the degree that I thought I would. Yeah, I am shocked at that. I really am, but I do really miss playing poker. I could play online, but remember, I used to play online for a living, and I when I go, I, I want to go and I want to play live, um, and I miss it. I definitely do, for sure. Uh, this is uh, uh, Rose City Gen Micha from Smith T's in Portland, Oregon. Um, my all-time favorite tea. Wow, nobody has gotten this one. If you miss racing, watch M Marbula One. Starts this month, can't wait. And how big, I cannot imagine how insane the guys uh, at, uh, at Yen's Marble Racing must have been when it got featured on Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. Oh my God, that would be... Talk about hitting the jackpot for those guys, that's amazing. Uh, yeah, that was awesome, that's really cool. Oh, no, I did not burn out. The, the, uh, the DOJ shut down online poker here in the States. So uh, There you go. Finally, somebody has gotten it. Tony and Paul. Man, I was, I was about to. Stephanie got half of it. It is not a train game. There you go. Yeah, Paul, Eric, and sort of Stephanie got it. All right. Well done. Phew. I thought I was going to have to type one out. All right. All right. Take care, Guzzarino. I'm sure uh, your son appreciates that. All right. Well done. Uh, this is, uh, I will say this. This was the heaviest of the Roar trilogy. There you go. All right, moving on. Just glad somebody got that. This next one, uh, I think you guys would get it. This is from a now defunct company. We have sort of streamed this, sort of. The day we got our very first board game table. We sort of streamed this in a weird kind of way. Sort of.
Yep, Eric got it. Yep. Don't try and look this one up, people. It's like 200 plus bucks. It's stupid expensive. Yes, this was one of my Grail games. Hey, Indra. Wow. Wow, nobody. Well, sort of, kind of. Michael, kinda. Planet Marbles, the board game, yes. Planet, she's disappointed in herself on this one. <laughs> it's okay, Irene. Can't be, can't be witty on all of them. Wow, all right, well, here you go. Wow, nobody. Okay. Wimbley found it from a Google from Google searching, so I cheated. All right, I appreciate the honesty. There you go. All right, well, we'll move on. That one. Uh, uh oh. All right. Should I? Should I? No. Uh, no. Okay. There we go. Kiesel, thirteen to one. People versus Edward. Fair enough. The peanut gallery versus me. Yen says, I confess I'm only here to see games I never heard about. This is going to be a good one for that. It's, it's, it is fun. It can be frustrating. It's a balanced game. It's, 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 it's fun. You should have said that as a wild guess, Adam. All right. All right, here we go. Uh, this next one, we planned on streaming right as the pandemic uh, kind of took hold. So can't... Uh, we're waiting on this one. I actually have Rand's copy sitting in the library. I don't own this game, and I really want to own this game. This is a game that needs a reprint. Absolutely needs a reprint. In fact, I want to see if this is available. I mean, secondhand it might be, but... Yeah, it's pretty expensive. <laughs> right now. And this one needs a reprint. Bad. Wow, there's no copies of this in the U.S. on BGG. I'm trying to think who, you know, I could think of a lot of companies that could reprint this one that this would fit. Wow, seriously? I really thought that you guys would get this one, but I guess we haven't streamed it yet. So this one makes it tougher. No, it's, it's not uh, a Rand quirky game. This one, um, we've talked about, Tony and I talked about this on the podcast many moons ago. Nope, Adam, no one's got this yet. Wow. This is legit a phenomenal game. Uh, 
and it has some mechanism or a mechanism in it that I've never seen used in any other game. Although I think, uh, I think there is one other game that may have used this in it. Well, it seems to have stumped you guys pretty, pretty well. Uh, but what I will say about the mechanism is you guys see the uh, cards in the card racks, right? Nope, it's not King's Dilemma. Uh, the clever thing about this is players play on their turn. They play a card from each card rack. Each card rack is shared by two players. Uh, like if me and me and Jess would share one card rack and then me and whoever's across the table would share one card rack. Okay, and you play one card in each of the from each of those card racks each turn. You must play one of each. You play one for the full value and one for the uh, half value, and it's a pure uh, stock investment and manipulation game. Um, and yeah, Adam's right. Something about donating for charity, uh, and the one who donated the least automatically is out of the game, even if they scored the most. Yeah, and Between Two Cities is actually the game that I was thinking that used that mechanism as well. Uh, this is definitely older than that. I think this is from 2008. This is a game that really needs a reprint bad. Uh, and Benjamin, I think got it. I think re re retype that, Benjamin. And Adam, that, that's some sleuthing right there. Well done. Yeah, this is, this is a legitimately uh, excellent, excellent game. Yep, Adam nailed it, and I think Benjamin did too. So if you're watching this after the fact, go find their chat. There you go. Really, really good game. All right. Told you today was going to be harder, y'all. There's just no way around it. Oh, okay. All right. There you go, Benjamin. Netwilk says, well, Between Two Cities would be reverse of that mechanism. Oh, okay. But may have been inspired by that, maybe. I don't know. And there may be other games that use that mechanism that I'm not, uh, that I'm not thinking about. But, yeah, this is, this is a game that is in need of a reprint. Very simple me uh, mechanisms, but excellent gameplay. So, all right, let's move on, shall we? This next one, War Game. Uh, the reprint was on Kickstarter, and in fact, this is, this is one of the games I'm going to be giving away, by the way. And this is also uh, from the newest edition of this. And this is the edition that I will be giving away as part of the giveaways. For this. Ah. Uh, it's a famous general. All right, enough of the hints. Getting bad about that. So as I was saying, I do miss playing poker. For sure. Uh, I don't miss sports as much as I thought I would, but I do miss sports. Um, I will say that The Witcher 3 has done an excellent job of filling in the gap. I've gotten back into playing video games. I think I'm like 70 hours into The Witcher 3 and I'm only like 19, 20% of the way into the game. It's all about the side quests. Let's be clear, okay? No Netwilk? This is one that I'm going to want to stream once I can have uh, like Asher or Andrew. Uh, I actually lost a game of Gwent. I, I lost two games of it recently, which shocked me. 
Uh, I have a pretty good deck. I have, actually have two pretty good decks. My Northern Realms, pretty strong. But I started using the Nilfgaardian uh, Gwent deck. And wow, do I have some, some clever plays. Uh, card combos in that and I'm, I'm discovering new stuff all the time. That's My win percentage is pretty good. Uh, I started out not really good, so I have uh, way more losses than I probably should but, uh, but I've gotten pretty clever at it and I gotta say Gwent Really impressive for that being like a card game within a video game. That is a legitimate good game So just saying Mark says, I'm still playing No Man's Sky, almost 700 hours in. Wow. Yes, and the name of the publisher is featured on one of the cards in the picture. That is true. No, no, uh, <laughs> Witcher, you got addicted to the Slavic theme. That's why you're considering going to Poland. No, uh, we have a lot of friends uh, in the industry, the guys from Board and Dice uh, and some other folks um, there in Poland. Um, and obviously Adam is there. Plus, there's a lot of history I want to go and see in, in Poland as well. So, Ashbjorn says, I want to see Brian come down from Denver for a game of this. Yes. I I watched the girlfriend reviews on um, Witcher Three. That was that was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Rocky, speaking of girlfriend reviews, you might have triggered Irene a bit with Gwent talk. Spent a lot of time watching me play Gwent. <laughs> I don't have the time normally, but now that I'm not playing poker, if I'm not working on the show, I'm playing The Witcher. And if I'm not playing Witcher, I'm working on the show. Because Jess and Cooper are only here half the time, so. Uh, I, yeah, I need, to, I need to check into the actual, like, there's a spin-off game of Gwent that they made. I don't know that. All right, so you guys nailed that one pretty well. Uh, this next one has some stuff in common with a previous game posted today on, on this. Ooh, Benjamin, good question. Uh, they are very different games. I think it would depend on player count, right? Two or four. Outer Worlds, is that, or Outer Wilds, Mark? I have the Outer Worlds. I'm waiting until it's available on Switch so Jess and I can play simultaneously. Her on the Switch, me on the PS4. The people who added Gwent into the game paid someone to design a card game professionally, but they didn't like it. So they threw it out and designed a new card game or new game in 48 hours. Is that the real story, Adam, for Gwent in The Witcher 3? Outer Wilds. I think so. I told this story not too long ago. Uh, I either in an Ask the Elephant or uh, on one of these that. I had one of those real big epiphany moments. Um, this is within the last two months during all of this. So I recently got back into video games and all that stemmed from the uh, cocktail hour with me and Clay from Capstone. And he started really talking up Witcher 3. And I didn't have a PS4. I haven't had a, a, a video game system in years. I still have like a PS3 and an Xbox 360 upstairs, uh, but I skipped the entire generation, partially because when um, Matt was my roommate, he had a PS4, and that's how I was able to play partially, at least, Horizon Zero Dawn, and partially The Last of Us. 
And uh, so I kind of can't play poker. So I needed something else as like downtime and diversion stuff. So I uh, ended up picking up a, a PS4 and like six or seven games, super cheap, uh, all, all like under 20 bucks. Witcher 3, uh, The Last of Us, Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, you know what? Here, I'll, I mean, we can talk video games, right? A moment. Oh no! That's one of the problems with using the keyboard for this. It switches that, so I apologize. <laughs> Gotta go back, I will tell you. Okay, so I got the Bioshock series. I've never finished Bioshock, like the original, so I figure I was told I needed to do that. The Outer Worlds, uh, Persona 5, The Last of Us, Horizon Zero Dawn, Witcher 3, and the Quantic Dream Collection, uh, which is uh, Detroit, Beyond Human, Heavy Rain, and Beyond Two, Beyond Two Souls. So, those are the games I picked up, and I've been into The Witcher pretty much exclusively, okay? Have fun. Take care, Paul. So, the reason I bring this up is I, I like doing research on games and finding out about, you know, what new games are out there and stuff, because I basically missed a generation of, of video games. So this is a very long way of coming around to what it, this epiphany was. I was watching some shows like, uh, some channels like Game Ranks and IGN and whatever for, oh, like the top 20 PS4 games or the top 20 RPGs, because I love RPGs. I don't like RPGs, board games, usually. Uh, so like something like Gloomhaven, I don't, it doesn't grab me because if I'm going to play that, I would rather play something like The Witcher 3 or something like that, right? Skyrim, et cetera, et cetera. So I started watching all these top whatever shows and I had this, oh my God, moment that, oh wait, this is what I do for you guys, partially, obviously. And I was like, wow. So then it kind of, it was that real big epiphany aha moment, like why lists are so, like people use that stuff. So I was laying in bed and I have a notebook there and a pen and I have a list of like 30 games that I wanna go check out. And one of those is Outer Wilds. So that's what stemmed this conversation, Mark, is you mentioning Outer Wilds. Okay, there you go. Maybe not a classic anecdote, I don't know, but okay. So, and The Last of Us is, The Last of Us 2 is about to come out, and I'm really jonesing to play The Last of Us so I can get that, but then again, I was like, you know what? I just listed all those games. That literally, I have a year or two of playing there, so I can wait until Last of Us 2 is cheaper, so no rush. There you go. Uh, Baldur's Gate, um, never finished them. Icewind Dale, I, I never finished them back on the PC. Early Fallouts, same thing, never finished them. Fallout Tactics was my favorite. Final Fantasy Tactics, Final Fantasy VII. I have not gotten the remastered yet, but I will. So there we go. Yeah, it's just, it's amazing. Anyway, all right. You guys did a really, really good job here. Uh, guessing this one, so I will, uh, I will move on. All right, this next one should be in, uh, a, a gimme for you guys, I think. That's a, that's a punt. Okay. Planescape Torment. See, if all of these got remastered, like, onto the PS4 or whatever, I would definitely pick them up. I think, I think Baldur's Gate did, didn't it? I think so. I don't think uh, Planescape Torment ever was. Uh, yeah. 
God, this is good tea. Legitimately the best tea I've ever had. Ooh, Kiesel, getting fancy. I don't know. I honest to God don't know what map that is. Huh. Jens, you can always minimize chat until you're ready to guess and then throw your guess in there. This is a game that just never grabbed me. This is, if not Shrey's favorite game, I know it's one of. I think it might be Shrey's favorite game. Refresh if you're having lag issues or just minimize chat. So just a little help. Ian, possibly. Welcome back, Joe. How, hope the Zoom meeting went well. Yeah, this is a game that just never grabbed me. It's super popular. I, it's a fantastic game, but it's a game that just never grabbed me. I don't know why. Yeah, I, I, I don't know why. Because it should. All right. So apparently we do have definitive uh, answer from Ashbjorn as far as which map that is. Oh, I have a uh, Netwilk and really, really did not enjoy that game. Joe, it contained no real information. So it was a meeting about having the next meeting. <laughs> yeah, like if so, every time somebody has ever said, hey, do you want to play this? Or let's play this. And I'm like, eh, what's the other table playing? Now. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the game. The game is perfectly fine. I just, it just never grabbed me, and I don't know why. That bugs me. And yeah, see, Joe says his favorite Euro. I think Shrey, uh, yeah, this is one of his four favorite games, and I don't know why it just never grabbed me. I just don't know. Shut up and sit down's review is basically a love letter to this game. <laughs> Oh yeah, there's lots of uh, outpouring of love for this game. I just, yeah. Again, nothing wrong with the game. It's a good game. It just doesn't excite me. Mark says he would happily take my seat in, in, in a play. Okay, all right, fair enough. Oh, Asbjorn, man. He says, nope, I'm wrong. It's the Italy map. Just check my box of maps. <laughs> All right, so you guys got that. All right. <laughs> I love that you guys are actually going and grabbing it off the shelf. Be like, yes, it's this map. That's awesome. That's really cool. All right, this next one uh, has some clues. Um, it's going to be tougher, considerably tougher, but uh, yeah. Ah, uh, okay, Joe. That's okay. Well, I mean, at least get you thinking about that stuff, right? And possibilities, even if nothing decided or nothing was decided, right? Ooh, Paul. Bam. Paul just, psh, what up? Good job. What gave it away, Paul and Netwilk? Clark. 
close, Ian, close. Man, this is good stuff. I know, I, I tried to get a sponsorship because I love their tea so much, but man, that is, that is really phenomenal tea. Oh, okay. Paul recently played this. Okay, that makes sense. Otto, you're going to make me copy and, 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 and translate that, aren't you? Okay. All right. I'm down for that. Challenge accepted. Okay. Hello, Otto. That's my name in Russian. Really? That's really cool. I'm such a geek. I'm like the world's biggest five-year-old. Huh. So, would it, uh, I'm going to butcher the pronunciation, but I'm going to try. Is it Privet Otto? Huh? huh? Maybe? That's really cool. Ooh, Chris, busting out a little geography and history. Good stuff. This is one I'm, I'm definitely uh, jonesing to stream. So, all right. Sorry, Mark. All right, well done, well done. All right. Uh... We're going to go a little classic Euro for this next one that I think uh, has stood up and absolutely is a classic for a good reason. Okay? That's okay, Tony. That's more entertaining. Okay? Priviet? Is it Priviet? Is that closer, Alexander? I love, I love, I love this community. This is amazing. It really is. All right. All right. The next one, absolute classic and still holds up. Still a fantastic game. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. So I am, uh, I just mentioned, uh, I was talking Witcher three, right? Uh, I am now level 20, and I just last night made my first ever trip to Skellige. No spoilers, please. Just saying. Matt, quick on the draw. Thought I'd be dead. <laughs> Rocky and Irene. You, that's awesome. This is excellent. All right. So the I is in EE. -E. Okay. I told you guys, don't send emails yet because I want to know how you did overall. Total. Yeah, this one is really an excellent game. Really is. Have we streamed this? I think now that we're in the hundreds of games, I'm allowed to ask that question because I can't remember. I feel like we did but it could have been that we just played this off 
stream. Ah, I'm sorry, Brianna. I hope your day gets better. I did, Joe. I, I will do it again, though. The the secret word for and the only word that I want in the in the subject address is unity. Okay, send an email, contact at heavycardboard.com. Two things in there. One, how many did you get? Doesn't matter how many you got. If you got zero or you got them all, it doesn't matter. And when did you first start watching or listening to the show? Adam, yes, you did. Robert, Banker, Dave, and someone else, September 3rd, 2019. Oh, maybe we stream this twice? Wow. All right. Awesome. All right. Wow. Oh, there you go. All right. All right. You guys nailed this one. Irene, I'm sorry. Okay. All right. This next one... I I just realized how big of an effect, well, I, I kind of knew how big I was into Roman and ancient history and war game themes. So, uh, yeah, there's another one here. My bad. I, coincidence. Hey, Andy. How's it going? I'm looking forward to exploring more in Skellige. Yeah, I will say that the uh, some of the quests in uh, in Witcher Three have been a little heavy-handed as far as just. Like, come on, don't make it so obvious. But, man, some of the quests in there are just fantastic. They really are good. Um, yeah, they're really good. And I'm living with my decisions, as they are. And so here's something I have uh, that m maybe says something about people in general. I don't know. Maybe I'm going way too deep into this. But I have never once ever been able to play an evil character in a video game. Like, I can't not be a good person in a video game. I have a certain code that I live by. Like, in games like uh, Skyrim, if you were a terrible person, I would loot you completely of all of your clothes and the whole nine yards and just leave you out there for the uh, the animals to eat your body, right? Whereas if you were a good person or whatever, I would not do that. It would be more respectful. But I cannot make evil choices in video games. I have never been able to do that. And The Witcher is one of the very few games in which I, well, I can't play as like a ranger type, you know, death from afar with a bow or whatever. Uh, Skyrim, that was all me. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been an interesting uh, experience. And I don't, and Jess asked me the other day, like, isn't that most everybody like can't play evil character? I was like, no, I think there are plenty of people out there that can play evil character. I cannot, I just can't. This game, uh, I have a copy, but uh, uh, Andrew let me borrow his copy in case I wanted to play a solo stream of this, which may happen still, okay? Because the bots are fairly intuitive and quick. So there we go. That is not true, Robert. <laughs> Irene.
The expansion was good for this, Shrey. We actually streamed it. Yeah, see, in board games, I don't have a problem being evil. Video games, I do. I wonder if it has to do with the length, uh, the period of time. Like I said, I'm 20% of the way done in Witcher, and I'm 70 hours in. So being evil for that long, I don't know if I could do I, I don't know. But like, like in a game like Descent, I have no problem being the bad guy, being the, you know, uh, or whatever. Um, but yeah. Huh. You can play as a dumb character in uh, Outer Worlds. Outer Worlds feels extraordinarily generic, but it seems like it's going to be enjoyable. I like messed around with it for like an hour and then I got into The Witcher and I'm gonna be in The Witcher for a while. But yeah, interesting. All right, you guys nailed this one. Well done, well done. Uh, this next one's either going, I would argue that almost all of you have never played this next one, but you may still get what this game is. Look carefully at the picture. Maybe video games are more visceral, or Yorick says it's the agency and you are the central character, whereas in board games it's just a role. That could be it. Maybe it's the extra step of disassociation that board games provide. That's an These are interesting questions, I think, right? This was the best picture that I could find for this that didn't have a bunch of custom stuff. By the way, when you see what game this is, okay, uh, go look at some of the custom things that people have made. That's amazing to me, and that's fantastic. Uh, Ian, kind of, for baseball nerds. <laughs> hey, J Rex, what's up? Hi, I hope you've warmed up. Yeah, always good in video games, but happy to be the betrayer in video in board games. Yeah, it's really interesting, isn't it? And talk about a good storytelling game. This game right here is a good storytelling game. It really is. I'm impressed that you guys, so many of y'all got this. I'm surprised, pleasantly surprised, but uh, I love the how many of you guys know the details of this. I'm legit, non, non, non US based people as well. Jess says, someone tell Edward baseball isn't going away after this year. I'm telling you. So, Jess and I got into a, a pretty heated discussion about this the other night that if, if the players and owners can't get together and have a 2020 season, because of money, it's going to be far worse than what happened in 94. Because if all the other sports are playing and baseball isn't, people are just not going to come back to baseball anywhere near the numbers that they were. I'm really worried about that. Will it still exist? Yes. But, man... In this game, playing the bad guys would be playing as the Yankees. The 27 Yankees, specifically. 
but yes. Yeah, you have to live with being a bad guy in video games so much longer than a board game. It usually has consequences, right? Yeah. Yens, I, uh, I, I am unfamiliar with that, ver that, that game that you mentioned. I'm going to look that up. Yeah, the dice towers there are, are, are not part of the game. It's all paper and little cards. That's it. Yes, Andy, exactly. He's the one who turned... Uh, Jim from Punching Cardboard is the reason I got into Stratomatic Baseball. And I loved playing with it. I, it was fantastic. That was really, really good. Blood Bowl Alpha version. <laughs> oh, Chad, I disagree. I, I felt that way for a long, long time. Baseball's dead to me if they... No, it's not if. It's when they bring the DH to the NL. It's, it's coming. No, sports means more time for board games. True, but I live board games. So I... Yes. Uh... Uh, I hope you're right, Murr, but man, I hope they figure it out. All right, you guys nailed this one. Color me pleasantly impressed. This next one, I think is, I don't want to use the word an excellent game, but it's a, it was a very good game and I really enjoyed playing it, but it requires you to print out a player aid that doesn't come with the game. because it's near impossible to play without, okay? Oh, wait, really, Andy? The Portland Beavers don't exist anymore? Really, I didn't know that. Jess is right. I did not respond to her argument that way. <laughs> I'm sorry. Italian origami, right? Wow, there is one person that has gotten this right so far. Assassin's Creed 2, the Euro game. <laughs> You're in the right place, right? Two people have gotten this one right now. Hey Jess, they haven't called. Interesting, Andy. Ah, this is this has got a lot of y'all stump, but there have been a few answers correct on this one. I definitely would recommend checking this one out. Um, just understand that uh, that it it is really hard. Um, some of the components are to be able to see across the table. We spoke, Tony and I spoke about this on the podcast as well, uh, many moons ago. Uh, some of the components, they're hard to see across the table, uh, but the game itself is a really good game. Um, yeah, I've heard that the, the dice game version of this is not good, but this game, the main game is good, however. Hey, Danny from Ireland. Hey. So Danny, I got to ask, are the pubs still closed in Ireland? Like, to me, that's, that's when things, that's when you know the pandemic's serious, when pubs are closed in Ireland, right? Are they? I'm curious. Oh, Benjamin was not impressed with this game. Okay. 
That's funny, Mark. All right. Next one. Uh, this one was hard to get a picture of. That showed the game. This one's tough. Uh, yeah, this one was tough. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. It's a pretty picture, though. Yeah, the dice game version of that game previously. I've heard not positive things about. I haven't played it. It's in the other room. I haven't played it yet. And it's hard to get motivated when everything I hear is eh, about it. This is one that I want to stream as well. People don't know what to do in Ireland. <laughs> hey, be safe, be smart. They will be open eventually. I misspoke. Apparently, this one is not hard uh, for you guys at all. I'm pl pleasantly surprised. Yeah, I definitely want to stream this one. I have no idea, Kiesel. Yes, I understand that, Wembley, but again, it's really hard to find a non custom picture of this that actually shows it off. And I think that was blurred out enough. So. All right, Irene. No, uh, it would be a stream that would have spoilers. There's no way around that. But obviously, it would all be, to, uh, you know, mentioned. And it's not going to be, I mean, there's a lot of game in that box. So it would ruin a tiny aspect of it, but I would have to. And I think that it would still do a good job of uh, showing the game to people that and may pique their interest. Kiesel, like six hour streams are a problem for me? Come on, man. There's a reason I'm getting a new chair tomorrow. Swamp of madness. <laughs> Nova Scotia opening bars on Friday. All right, be safe. Yeah, I have no problem doing this one. I think they're opening on Sunday some stuff, like uh, outdoor seating in restaurants, I think, is opening on Sunday. I got to be honest. Like, when the casino opens, I'm still going to be reticent to go. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be an interesting thing. I, when I go to the grocery store, people get too close, and I'm like, hey, like, respect the one-way aisles and all of that. So, anyway. All right. Next one is going to be, uh, well, tough. But maybe not terribly tough. Some of y'all will get this. It's going to be a contingent of you guys that will not. But I think there's enough information on this to be able to get this one relatively. Yeah, I just don't want to go out and eat. I just don't feel comfortable with that yet. Andy, I I hear you. Yes. Scotland's pubs have been shut for about 10 weeks. Uh, one has to ask, is it really Scotland anymore? 
Tim, I don't know it, but I already want to play it. Yep. Airplane chicken. I want to play this very badly too, Chris. You should come here and we can play this. How about that? Nope, Yorick. It's a GMT game. Oh, was it in the last one? Was it? All right, there might be one crossover. All right, my bad. My bad. Anyway, all right. Close, Yorick. You have the time period right. Funny you mentioned the Red Baron. Hmm, Jess. All right. No, never mind. <laughs> never mind. Seems you guys, some of y'all, got this. It's World War I, block war game. I've had this for way too long for if not, it's still to be on the shelf of, or in the room of opportunity, as it were. All right, this next one I think is going to be a gimme for you guys. I'm ready. Hold on. I'm going to do a 10-second countdown, and then I'm going to watch chat just fill up. You ready? 10, 9, 8, 4, 1, 0. I don't know if the boat is custom. Everything else is a part of the game. I think the boat is custom, so that does, that's not part of it. Yeah, I think, yeah, the boat's custom. It's filling up, but slower than I expected, I gotta be honest. An expansion? An expansion, Tony? Aren't there a whole lot of expansions for this? Does this still have the longest teach in heavy cardboard history? And he's got jokes. <laughs> this, uh, this game, uh, I was told by the designer, developer, publisher that uh, I was very thorough in my teach of this. I don't know if that was a compliment. I didn't take it as he meant it as a compliment. Oh, I got you. The, uh, so the 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 mini, the boat mini, is an in is in an expansion. Now I understand what you mean, Tony. Gotcha. Yeah, I think this was an hour and seventeen minutes. This teach. Andy, I still remember the sign I put up at PAX East directing people to the heavy cardboard teach. Because ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> I won't teach this game again. If you want me to teach this game, I'm going to show you the video. And come back in an hour and 17 minutes. Nope, won't do it. The game has some really good stuff in here, man. But man, did it need development. It needed some stuff cut out. 
It really did. I'll play it again. I'll even happily play it again. I just don't ever want to teach this again. So, here we go. All right, well done, well done. This next one is a game that I have uh, borrowed from Andrew that uh, I haven't streamed yet, but is coming in the next couple of months. Okay. It's the rolled goob, Rube Goldberg machine of heavy euros, seven list says. Yeah. Benjamin says, I just make people watch you teach it. <laughs> oh, wow. A lot of you guys have gotten this quicker. Uh, the, obviously, the card holder and dice tray and all that is custom. That's not part of the game on this, but. Well, again, Yorick, like, I'm okay with that. It's not obvious. And I know the name, and I'm looking at full screen, and yeah, kind of, but no, I'm totally fine with that, so. Yeah, I, I've heard a lot of good things about this game. I've yet to play it. Benjamin, do you really make them popcorn for the viewing? That's That might be one of the my favorite things I've ever heard about this. That's amazing. Looks paxy. I, I totally get that. I, I understand why you would think that. I totally can see that feel to this, Kiesel. Yeah. It also kind of has just, again, just on a, on a gut look at this picture, it kind of also has a feel of Trial of Louis Real, right? With the jurors and the spaces at the top, right? Kind of. That's awesome, Benjamin. That's awesome. Uh, yes, uh, Seven List says this is one of best, uh, one of the best Volko uh, room key designs, which I'm really hoping that Volko, uh, even though technically it's not his game on Saturday, uh, it's Brian Train's game, I'm hoping that both of them will be in chat during Saturday's stream of uh, Colonial Twilight. So, all right, take care, Ian. Thanks for hanging out. All right. You guys did relatively well with that one, I think. Man, there's some really tough stuff coming. Whew. All right. Here we go. The next one uh, may or may not be tough. Andy says, hi, treason. Uh, probably the best recommendation Edward ever gave me. Awesome. I'll take that. Thanks, Andy. All right, this next one. Uh, I don't know how good of a representation this picture is of the game. But any other pictures I found just seem like a cluttered mess. So this is a tough one, all right? Funny, I'm going to do the same, seven less. The longest uh, board game name that I know of, this one. Getting a new, ver uh, a updated version, which I think is going to definitely uh, be something welcome for this game. Oh, you guys are doing better with this than I thought. Okay. And yes, the game is a cluttered mess. I know, but...
Clutter Mess was the alternate title. <laughs> Paul showing off now. Yes, it does play great at six. I agree. Jess and I sat down with the designer at the gathering uh, last year and had some really, really interesting conversation. Uh, uh, he and I, I think it would be an interesting conversation with heavy cardboard. I think that would be, uh, that would be good. Dare I say it was a cleverer clue? <laughs> Clutter the game, but with elder gods. It was a little, yeah, fair enough. All right, you guys did well on that. This next one, you're not. Oh. I just realized something. Oh, oh, uh. Hey, Caesar! Looping Games. You guys, uh, 1942, the most recent one that I did, the little box games, looping games, that's Caesar. Hey, what's up, Caesar? Yeah, this one's going to be tough for y'all. I think. This is not a GMT game. This is... Is this Academy Games? Did this one? Ah... Yeah, I just realized that, that it's over there. Ah, I missed it. Twice I missed it. I have heard, still have not played this, I have heard that this is an amazing, amazing game. Yeah, it's Academy Games, okay. It's a block war game. You can see that with the steps, the step loss, meaning like it's a four strength or a full strength, then three strength, then two strength, then one strength or whatever, or two to one or whatever. Uh, this reminds me of those thought boards you see on TV with the cork boards and strings with the serial killers. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, the name is in the picture. I missed it. My bad. But I've heard nothing but good things about this uh, being a fantastic block war game. All right, we'll move on. This next one, I have been, I have heard, is ASL for, uh, for non-war gamers. Okay. And I do believe that this was, may still be, I don't know, but was one of Tom Vassell's all-time favorite games. I believe. ASL being advanced squad leader. It is not that, okay? But I've heard this compared to ASL for non-war gamers. Antiquity 2030. <laughs> ah! 
and Netwilk says nowhere close to ASL. I know that, you know that, but I have heard, I mean, the, I get why people would say that, but yeah, nowhere near, I agree. Hey, Brian. PUBG, the board game. <laughs> uh, if you could be a time traveler too, yes. This is the second iteration of this game, by the way. This is the more current version. I would like to get this back to the table at some point, too. I wouldn't mind streaming this at some point. And it scales pretty well. Basically what it is, is you get a, you build up an army of, uh, it's kind of, without the 3D terrain, it's kind of hero ish where you can have mechs uh, teamed up with like dinosaurs, teamed up with Roman legions, teamed up with, yeah, all, all of that stuff. Yeah. So this is the, the the premise of this game I thought was fantastic. And it's it's got some pretty cool stuff in this game. It's got some really weird card sizes. A lot of sleeves. A lot of sleeves. So a lot of you guys did get this earlier here. Well, maybe not a lot, but a handful of y'all. All right. All right. But yeah, um, I've enjoyed my plays of this when I played it. All right. This next one, I think, I think will be easy. I think. It's a really good picture, too. I don't know how descriptive of the game itself the picture is, and that's one thing I struggled with on this one. But I think it's a good picture. No, well, I own the first and second editions of that last game. Never played it. I watched uh, uh, No Pun Included's review of this game. And it's hard. It. This is the type of game I feel like would appeal to a large swath of heavy cardboard viewers and listeners. I think we're, I think this game uh, fits very well with the types of games that a lot of heavy cardboard, the herd, will enjoy. It's not going to be for everybody, and Matt says game fell flat for him. Okay. Oh, and Alexander says this is the game. Uh, this is a game that I introduced at uh, my work board game group. Went over really well. Nice, excellent.
Man, y'all are going to struggle with a lot of these coming forward. Whoo. All right, this next one. I have never played this next game. It is pretty rare, and it has some really distasteful stuff in the game. Uh, historically accurate, and I've heard that it's a pretty interesting game. I think I prefaced that well enough. I've never played this, but I definitely want to. I am intrigued at the premise of this game. A lot of people are just throwing out names just based on that preface. None of y'all are even close. When I saw Andy was in chat, I knew he would get this. Write it out, the whole name, Andy, for folks. Yeah, I've, I, I've, I've heard it's an interesting game. I don't know how good it is. Uh, I've heard some positive, um, but there's not a lot of people that have played this. There you go. Andy wrote down the, the whole thing. Yep, Warren got it, Kelly, Ashbjorn, yep. Those crappy published employee surveys results I read at work. How many games have you sh that you've showed in all three Name the Game episodes do you have or have on your shelves? I don't know the answer to that. Uh... Let me see. Give me a second while I try and go through some of this. Most, I will say that. I have all of the ones from the second one, it looks like. Name the game two. I have all of those. All right, I will. All right, Andy says it's legit good and fun and remarkably well, plays well at eight players. I'm trying to get a certain Swedish publisher to reprint this. I, uh, I need to play it before I give any opinions on it. I do know that there are, so what this game is about, it, it's a, uh, about, uh, it's a parliamentary game in a certain European country, and apparently the, the, uh, they're not factions, what do you call it? the political total brain cramp, like Republicans, Democrats, all that, uh, the, uh, the, Oh my God, I cannot think of the word. We'll call it factions. You know what I mean. They're historically accurate. And there are some, or at least one in this game that I know of that has some really disgusting stuff in there. Um, just as a, like, no, like, no, 
not okay. Um, but given what the scope of the game is, it makes sense that it's in there, but man, that would be really hard. Uh, parties, thank you. Golly, I could not think of the word. Um, and I don't know which one it is. You guys can do a little bit of research and figure it out. Uh, I don't know anything about the details about these particular parties here. I know nothing about it in that. So, yeah. Anyway, all right, let's move on. So the next one is, for, uh, is uh, in my opinion, I think is his magnum opus for this war game designer. He's been on the show a number of times. Uh, I've never played this yet, but probably his, yeah, I, 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 most popular? I don't know, but I don't think most popular is right, but this is probably the pinnacle of his designs, I think, from what everything I know. It's not like the mocker, but kind of. Uh, the gameplay is nothing like it. And Andy says it. So the gist of the game is you're trying to play political positions that will move people's opinion one way or the other, and then you lock up voting blocks that best align with those opinions. There you go. It's the next best election game after d -Mocker, according to Andy. All right. <laughs> Fire into lake, a really big lake. And to answer the question from earlier, from today, there are only three that I do not own, but all three I will be owning here within the next month or so. If there's a dudes on the map uh, genre, there should be chits on a map genre. I agree, Kiesel. And yeah, you guys nailed this one. This, I think, was pretty, uh, pretty simple, relatively speaking. Uh, this next one, um, I only like it at the hard difficulty. The easier difficulties make it for a really boring game, in my experience. The cups are not part of the game, I should point out, all right? And Netwilk, that's a fair point about the last game, yes. This one seems to be, uh, oh, it did, it did uh, stump you guys there for a while, but a couple of y'all got it. Welcome back, Gusarino. I can't find my list from the first name of the game to answer that question. Sorry about that. Scott says, I've waffled on buying this game several times. Fair, Irene. Well, not a lot of you guys have gotten this one. 
Only two, Gusarino and Netwilk. And I love the range that some of you guys have as far as knowledge on this that goes. Yeah, this was a good game. Um, I have not played any of those, Benjamin. I own one of them, and no, I lied. I think, no, I played the middle one. I played Dutch Inner City, and I couldn't understand why that was well thought of. But it's one of those games to where you need to play it multiple times. I know that. So, Shrey says, I played this twice, find it to be better than average worker placement game, but not one that I'd buy. Hey, Nick. Bought it Essen. There are only four copies available. Love this one. Brian says this is a great break from reading transportation research reports. I am happy to provide that break for you, Brian. All right. All right. Well, not a lot of you guys have gotten this one. Uh, the only ones that called it out by name are Gusarino and Netwilk, although it's pretty clear that Shrey and Nick know what it is. So, okay. All right. All right, next, uh, yeah, we'll see how this goes. You guys have impressed me. I have heard amazing things about this game. I own it, never played it. I've had this for years, but I've heard really good things about this game. Shrey. <laughs> hey, Magnus. Welcome. Hey, if you guys are liking it, give it a thumb. I would appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel if you don't already. Consider supporting the show over on PledgeHC.com. Haven't gotten any today. I was hoping we would get new patron today. It's a new month. Nope, Mark. Nope, Kiesel. Secret safe room. Not very secret. Yeah, fair point. Clue in space. Yep, yeah, uh, fair, fair, valid, valid, uh, uh, Guess on that one. Keep talking and nobody explodes the board game. Wow, legitimately only one of y'all have gotten this. I'm surprised. See, it just goes to show. Sometimes I never know. Yeah, I legitimately, like, hold on. Let me, uh... Let me do some stuff real quick. Let's see. It's 7.7 .7 rating on BGG with 3,200 ratings. It has a weight of... 3.89, according to BGG, and it is best played at two players. Uh, Joe, I, I, I have intentionally stayed off of Patreon at the beginning of the month. I, I try and avoid it, if at all possible. 
it's probably lower than that just because you lose patrons at the end of the month, credit cards aren't updated, stuff like that. I know you did, Yorick. I know. It is thematic, yes. I mean, with 3,200 ratings, having it rated at 7.7, .7, it's pretty strong, not going to lie. So, yeah, so let's see, only two people have gotten this. All right, fine, since you guys are now pestering me about it, hold on. Not pestering, but. Two-factor authentication. Yeah, I knew that was going to happen. Hold on one sec. Sorry about that. There we go. Oof, the end of the month was rough. Uh, let's see. Ah, I did it again. Hold on. I can't use the number pad. Oh, God. Really? Hold on. Apparently math is... Uh, Since you guys are asking, let me update it. There you go. Now it's updated. How's that? Okay. All right. New month happens. All right. So. Let's see, uh, who got this one right? Dower Doe? Shrey? And Yorick? It's not Tannhauser. Good guess though, I appreciate that, Gusarino. And seven less got it. All right. All right. So let me get back to this now. So some of y'all got it at least. So there's that. All right. It's not much of a looker. Granted. Pretty good game, though, this one. Pretty strong game. I originally played this. I got turned on uh, this one by the, uh, the fellas at uh, the board game group. So, Brian, Larry, Lyndon. Curious. Nick. Well done. This is definitely an older game. You can tell by the artwork, I think. Or it looks like a prototype nowadays, I guess. How far we have come. Graphic design and artwork, huh? Wow. Whole lot of whole lot of non-guesses on this one. Uh, 
Adam. Their portrait artist had an aversion to direct eye contact, <laughs> right? How big do you guys have these? I'm trying to... Like, even so, I couldn't make that out. And it's on a 40-inch screen here. 40-inch TV. Wow. That's really interesting. So... So uh, Tony Boydell did the artwork on this, right? You look at this, and you look at his most recent game, you look at uh, Alibari. He didn't do the artwork for that, I understand. Hey, JT. He's hammered at work. Are you supposed to be drinking at work, JT? Get home safely, please. Use a DD, all right? <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. No, use the DD, but um, you. Yeah, I guess you do. Now I feel bad. Yeah, me too, Sevenless. I would love to see a live stream of Yenzi. I would like to play Yenzi. Not a lot of, not a lot of uh, correct answers on this one. Good game. Legitimately good game. All right, this next one. Nope. Uh, I've heard talk that it's getting uh, redone. Uh, the second edition is apparently the edition to get of this one. And I believe the designer is doing a new version of this one. Again, with the Romans. Andy, added to my list. Good. Yeah, I, it's still, I've only, I've only gotten you, nail, you know, gotten you guys once. Now, on some of these war games, I will say, you guys are struggling a little bit without JT here. There is that. Oh, really? Really, Nick? I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to talk to Tony about that. I didn't know about any of that. Okay. Roman Stratego. It's not CNC Ancients. Hammer of the Gauls. <laughs> this picture, Eric? Oh. Those of you guessing Caesar, you're going to have to go a little bit more specific on that. Because so far, this is looking to be number two. Just saying. Oh, interesting. So nobody has gotten this that hasn't cheated. I appreciate the honesty, Wembley. The designer is the same designer. Uh, 
Uh, oh, total brain cramp. A moment. Hands in the sea. Daniel Berger. <laughs> She's giving the screen the eye. All right. Wow. I think we can call that two for me. There you go. This is not from Columbia Games. Which you would think because either GMT or Columbia Games for Block War Games. It's not. It's from Worthington Games, actually. This one. All right. I think, uh, I, think I can call that a W for me. All right. So here, to make you guys feel a little bit better about yourselves, this next one is as easy a game as I can do for you guys today. Okay? Ashbourne says, the first uh, glory to Rome from my wallet. <laughs> All right. This is as easy as it gets today for me. Okay? I mean, most people, when they think block war games, they think uh, Columbia Games or GMT, I think. But yeah, Worthington as well. Brian says I needed that one, hadn't gotten one in a long time. I know, there's a reason that I put it down here for you guys a little bit. Hey, okay, hey, we're all right, got this. Dominant Species has never been my number one game, ever. But it's always been up there, yes. When your party hat rat matches the wrapping paper, very nice, very nice. <laughs> Ashbourne, yeah, you can wait a little bit. <laughs> quote, I hate spiders, end quote. That is, that is a serious tundra fight. You are correct. So, yes. All right, you guys nailed that one. Everyone feel a little bit better about themselves now? All right. How soul-crushing should I be right now? Yeah, this is this is one of my all-time favorites, Netwilk. Four, five, and six players. I love it. Let's just let let's go pretty hardcore soul crushing now that you guys feel good about yourselves. Hard, but not a war game. There you go. <laughs> Nick, do your worst. <laughs> I don't know if this was the worst that I could have done of those that are left, but it's up there. It might be the worst one. The, the, this might be the hardest. Non-war game of those left. s and M's popular here. <laughs> Although, 
I feel like Adam has an unfair advantage. I actually practiced how to pronounce this one. I did. It spent way longer than I'm willing to admit on trying to figure out how to pronounce this correctly. And it's still going to butcher it, so I'm not going to. Plus, I don't want to give away the name of the game. Uh, but... s and is that a minor company in an 18XX? I've already done that one, Yorick. I did that in game one or two. Well, uh, okay, I, I will do the first word. Uh, Boja, I think is how you pronounce the first word. Boja, I think. Adam? You can correct me now. Take care, Brian. Good luck with the video conference. I hope you're not wearing pants. I actually know what the definition of the name of this game is, what the words are, but. Almost, Kiesel says. All right, that's, like I said, it's the best I can do. I will say, uh, all right, I, a number of you guys have gotten this. So Netwilk got this, Adam got this, Kiesel sort of got this, kind of. All right, Rafal says that wasn't, uh, that was not bad. Okay, I'll take that. Uh, you ate the E at the, uh, well, well, it depends on which, like, I, I listen to a lot of them. Okay. All right. So what this is, I won't say the name of the game. How's that? But what, this is the Polish version and the four player version of God's Playground. Martin Wallace game. This is pretty rare. Uh, it has a gorgeous cover. Uh, in my opinion, and I don't know what the cover is from. Um, it's like an eagle's hat. It's beautiful. Uh, but this this was a grail game for me for a while. But um, God's Playground is three players. This is a four-player version of it. Um, yeah, it's God's Playground in Polish. And the 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 problem is, I couldn't get the uh, the 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 pronunciation right on the second part. Uh, uh, no, I got it. I, I can't. So there you go. Direct translation is kind of Hunger Games. Oh, interesting. All right. So anyway, that's what this is. That that's that's pretty much the hardest I could do for you guys. I think. All right. Not rare enough for me. Oh. I got you covered. They're still more rare, but I think people are going to guess it. So, all right. All right. So the next one is the, let me see, penultimate war game on the list. The next, the last one. I actually have both versions of this one, and I've never played this. It, so this was a shock to me. I had no idea that we have a legitimate resident expert uh, for this game. Um, it's Eric Brocious. Yes, that Eric Brocious. 18XX Eric Brocious. Apparently he's a pretty hardcore hard war gamer as well. And is this is kind of his, his jam, this game right here. I didn't know that until a couple months ago. So when I stream this, um, I'm probably going to have Eric. We may not stream it. We may just do a, a two-player thing since that's kind of how Eric prefers it. But, uh, but yeah.
something Normandy related. What gave that away? <laughs> Todd was first in the clubhouse on this one. D-Day-ish, but not D-Day. Yes! Yep. Yeah, I had no idea. Uh, so I think, yeah, this is the old Avalon Hill version, but L2 made a version of this game as well, and I was able to get a copy of that, and it's a nicer version. A lot of chits, but I've heard really good stuff about this game. All right, take care, Andy. Thanks for hanging out, dude. Yes, the coastline is very distinctive. That is true. Shadows over Normandy, Acton, Cthulhu. Yes, uh, a number of you guys got this one. All right. There's one more game left later on. Uh, all right. Let's try and make you guys feel a little bit better about yourselves right now. There you go. Elephant for the win. We are winding down. We have this. We have four more after this one. A challenge level squared answer as well. I did not know that, Joe. Yes, uh, I have heard that that previous game was the area impulse war game. I agree. That is exactly what, uh, how I have heard it as well, Chris. Yes, Nick. I will say it was a cool idea, but I think it was better, it, it was definitely gimmicky, uh, that what Nick just talked about, um, the sloping tray. It was a cool idea, though. This was the designer's first solo foray. True, Joe. All right, seems you guys nailed this one pretty well. Uh, that's the last. Nope, there's one up here. Uh, should I? Nah, we'll be nice. I'm not going to finish on a nice note. Rearranging the last four. Here we go. All right. This is the last gimme, I think. Another Steph picture here. Really, really good game that I need to get the new version of before I stream it. Hey, Stacy. I thought this was a gimme. Maybe not. Maybe not. Nope, Eric. 
Wow, okay. Nope, Joe. Wow, I really thought this would be... Huh, okay. Really good game. Uh, I, I know we've never streamed it, but I think we did a review of this. <laughs> Jonathan, I think we have a defi different definition of gimme. There you go. Some people are getting it. Some people have called this uh, Harry Potter, the board game, without the uh, license. I would argue this is the second best game from level 99 games. This was another really hard one to get a good picture of. This is a great picture, but I don't know how descriptive it is of the game, and so it made it really hard. I could go with a lesser picture, but it this was hard. Plus, to not show the name of the game on the backs of the cards makes it really hard. Oh, okay. See, I, I, this is familiar to me because I only have the first edition as well. I need to get the second edition before I stream it. Oh, that's why. Okay, the bases. Yeah, the bases are completely different in the second edition, which is why I need to get the second edition before I stream it. Yes, after Millennium Blades. Correct, Tony. Yeah, they changed the bases. That was the biggest gripe that we had about this game. So Chris is, Chris is, yep, you guys got it. Battlecon's good. Now, there's another one that you guys recommended I check out, which I haven't gotten around to yet um, from them. But, uh, but yeah, there you go. Good job. We have three left. And we have, th this is the last of the Euros, if you want to call it a Euro, right? Imperial, that was it, yep. All right. Let's go old school. Really old school. Look at those dice. Like you, you fill those in with a wax, like crayon, right? And then you wipe them off and the color is in the, I mean, those are old school dice. Old school. This is a game that I, I know I have. I have two of the expansions sitting in there, but I can't find the base game. When I find the base game, I want to stream this. All right? But I cannot find the base game in the library right now. Nope, it's not ASL. I will never own ASL. You guys are getting this one. This game's from 1983. It's in the top 90 war games of all time. It's rated 7.4 on BGG. From Victory Games. Uh, the reason I'm anti-ASL, I have nothing against ASL, but that is very much a lifestyle game, and it's a game that I'm just never going to get into. Ever. Ever, ever. Just never going to happen. Plus, it's uh, extraordinarily, it's a tactical war game, and that, that's my least favorite of war games. Add in the fact that it's a lifestyle war game, I'm just never going to. That's all. I have nothing against ASL, but yeah. I do not, Netwilk. Yeah, 
Uh, John Butterfield and Eric Lee Smith. Eh, you know, just some dudes. All right, you guys, you guys nailed this one pretty well. I would really like to be able to stream this at some point. I just, uh, I just need to find it. I can't. I have no idea how I have the expansion. I know I, I've had multiple copies of this game. I'm just worried that I accidentally sold them. I hope boy, years ago. I hope I didn't. So, all right. Next one. Uh, I think should be relatively easy. I think. I think. I think. That's, that's not, uh, not an acceptable answer, Eric. Yeah, see, you guys are nailing this one. I am nervous about this stream, man. Not gonna lie. I am really nervous about this one. Streaming it in two days. Come on. You guys nailed this. Okay. Last one. Here we go. So, before I go into this, Unity in the subject line, contact at heavycardboard.com. How many you got right? Be honest. Again, it doesn't matter. But I'm just curious. And when did you first watching, uh, first start watching or listening to the show? She's upside down right now. This is upside down train. Yes. Magnus, finally a, na a game I know. All right. And uh, the last one. Really, really old. Told you I wasn't going to finish on a nice note. Uh, Goose Serino, how about uh, ask me that during uh, at the end of the stream, okay?
clear graphics. I like this one. And you guys do see the dice in this, right? Like on that center card. Like, look close. I'm serious. Look very, 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 very close. Those are dice. Green and white and yellow dice and black. There are two white, two green, a yellow, and a black die in that picture. Adam, come to HeavyCon. There will be at least one copy there, if not more. And you know, yes, those are the real size dice that come with the game. They are not big squares. <laughs> Those are not dice. They are rounding error of what size a die should be. Those dice are like two or three millimeter dice, I think. Something like that. Although, you could always sub in other dice. You can Yes, you can inhale those dice. <laughs> or is that the actual surface of Jupiter? <laughs> That's awesome. And yes, a lot of people have gotten this game. Uh, I, I have been fortunate enough to get a copy of this. And just because I love you people, here you go. Little picture of the colonist for you. There you go. <laughs> I only did that because somebody asked for it earlier. So there you go. That was, that was fun. Uh, all right. So that now makes, I don't know, how many have there been total uh, between the three Name the Games? Uh, about 150, 130 games. So hopefully this has turned people on to investigating some games. Now, a lot of these, especially today, a few of these are very much grail games and prohibitively expensive. Uh, and I, uh, so yeah. Cheers, Gusarino and Rocky. <laughs> so there were 45 today. All right, so good stuff. So you guys, shoot me emails. Um, I will pick somebody next week, or some buddies, uh, and uh, give away, like, I can't do like Oprah. You get a game, you get a game, but on a smaller scale, I'm gonna try and do that, all right? All right, uh, maybe 46 of them, so there you go. Stacy at the, oh, oh, hold on. I'm sorry, guys. Hold on. Stacy asked what that was. That right there is glorious. This is uh, The Colonist. So, yeah, I highly recommend checking out. I just did a stream of The Colonist not too long ago. So, there you go. Wembley says, didn't get a lot of work done today. Ah, it's okay. All right. Tony. Blame the cocktails. That's good. All right. So today was definitely going to be the hardest, right? Because I did a lot of the easier ones. There were some gimmies today. There were some. But today was definitely a harder one. There were more war games ended up in this today than I realized uh, when I was divvying these up and everything. But, uh, but yeah, that was a lot of fun. I right, Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Little, 
a little time away from whatever it is you wanted to get away from. Uh, so yeah, now my inbox is just flooding now with folks. So good. All right. All right. So be kind to one another. Seriously, it's not that hard. Just be kind to one another. All right. Uh, continue social distancing, wear your masks. Yeah, just be kind to one another, whether it's in person or electronically. Just be kind to one another. It's not hard. It's just not as hard as some people make this out to be. So, and uh, yeah, treat each other with respect. And I will see you guys in two days, 1500 at Wednesday for 1862. Train game. Nervous about that one. Not going to lie. All right. Ben says, I know these are a lot of work, but would love to see more of it uh, in the future. Well, if you haven't watched the other two, you got three of them now to go watch. That's like 10 hours of entertainment right there between these, right? This was, yeah, it was three. Yeah, they're about three hours a piece, right? So there you go. Check them out. All right. Good. I'm glad you guys had fun. I had fun. Hopefully so. Give it a thumb down below if you haven't subscribed. Consider supporting the show over on pledgehc.com if you, because like you said, these are a lot of work. So if you think this is worth a couple bucks a month, I certainly would appreciate it. I know times are tough. Their time, the times are tough for everybody, including uh, your content creator. So keep that in mind. Certainly appreciate the support, y'all. Have a great rest of your day. Be kind to one another. I'm going to go chill out, have a bite to eat, maybe play a little Witcher, and then get into 1862. We'll see you guys in 47 and a half hours. All right? Take care, everybody. Bye.